Hi and welcome this is Ben and today we are going to take a look at the iPhone XR. Now, if you are trying to buy this phone in 2020 or if you are trying to decide between this one and the iPhone 11, keep watching. When this phone was launched, there were some concerns about this phone having slightly bigger bezels compared to the likes of the iPhone XS. Now the reason is that the iPhone XS comes with an OLED display which can be bent, helping it with a tiny bezel size. And this phone comes with an LCD display which cannot be bent, hence having a slightly thicker bezels. I'm using this phone for over six months and I can say that, that having the little thicker bezel does not affect the iOS user experience in any way. Moreover, if you're planning to put a case on this one, the difference between these two phones should be even minimal. The screen is of very high quality, has got excellent viewing angles, and it's very vibrant as well. Uh, in fact, when I first put this phone next to the iPhone XS, which has got an OLED display, I was quite surprised because I was expecting to see a drastic difference in quality between the two phones, uh, but it was not the case. Despite the fact that the iPhone XR comes with only 326 ppi, whereas the iPhone XS with OLED display comes with a 458 ppi. One important thing to consider here is that some people are sensitive to the flickering that is caused by the OLED displays because it causes them headaches even if they only stare at the screen for a few minutes. So if you are one of them, you are probably better off by choosing an iPhone with an LCD display like the iPhone XR or the iPhone 11 or if you prefer a smaller screen, probably the iPhone SE 2 is a good bet for you. If you haven't heard about the eye strain or headaches that is associated with the OLED display, it actually has to do with the method implemented to manage brightness in an OLED display. So in phones like iPhone XR that comes with an LCD screen, when you try to reduce the brightness, what happens behind the scenes is that the amount of current that flows into the LCD display is reduced. And that reduces the brightness in the screen. Now, you cannot employ the same technique for OLED panels because in OLED panel, each individual pixel is illuminated. So if you try to reduce the brightness of an OLED panel by reducing the current that flows into the OLED panel, it causes changes in the color temperature and it creates an unacceptable image quality. So for this reason, a method called PWM or pulse width modulation is implemented in OLED screens to manage brightness. So when you try to reduce the brightness of an OLED screen, what happens behind the scene is that the screen is turned on and off multiple times per second, like 200 to 250 times per second to reduce the brightness of the screen. Now your eyes will not be able to see that, but if you are a sensitive person, your brain picks it up and that is what is causing the headaches and eye strains that are associated with the OLED displays. Speaking about the performance of this phone, this phone comes with 3 GB of RAM. There was no lag at all. The animations were very smooth. Even when I had multiple applications open, I did not find any lag with this phone. The phone has got a 2942 mAh battery and I consistently get 1.5 to 2 days of battery life with moderate usage which I think is pretty good for an iPhone. Regarding the primary camera on this phone, it can take great outdoor shots. The color reproduction is very good. It's not exaggerated as in some phones. Uh, it's more closer to the natural color of the object that you are shooting it and it's very good. Now this phone can take portrait photos with the nice bokeh effect and keeping the subject in focus. Here in this phone, it is achieved through software unlike the iPhone XS wherein it is managed by hardware. Like they use two cameras in iPhone XS to get that bokeh effect wherein in this phone, similar to the Pixel series of phone, it is achieved via software and I think the implementation is very good and you get nice portrait photos out of this phone. 
Now coming to the video, the optical image stabilization on this phone is awesome. I took this video while walking in the park and I made those uh, jerky movements with the phone intentionally but the video turned out to be not that jittery at all. And I felt the microphone is pretty good too with very good noise cancellation. This phone does not have a dedicated night mode for low light photography. But if your scene is decently lit, you should be okay. I was able to get some decent looking shots from Times Square. So talking about the cons, I also don't like certain things about this phone. So for example, accidental screenshots. I always end up taking screenshots when I try to increase the volume on this phone. Let me explain what I mean. So basically to take a screenshot, you have to press the power button and the volume up button. Whenever I hold the phone like this and I try to increase the volume by using my index finger, the thumb always falls in place over the power button. So when I try to increase the volume like this, I always end up taking a screenshot. And the next thing is that this phone takes 2.5 hours to go from somewhere like 10% to 100%. It comes with the 5 watt charger in the box and it takes that much to charge itself. Finally, this phone still can't take portrait of your pets. So if you have a pet and if you'd like to have a portrait photo, you can't do that with this phone because this phone takes portrait of only human beings. If you're trying to decide between the iPhone XR and the iPhone 11, let's first take a look at the extra features that comes with the iPhone 11. With the iPhone 11, you get an additional camera at the back. It's a 12MP ultra wide camera with f2.4. It has a higher field of view. It supports 2x optical zoom. It comes with night mode that helps you to take better photographs in low light conditions. It can take portrait photos of your pets. It comes with an 813 bionic chip. Now this chip is one generation higher than the chip that is found in the iPhone XR. It has a slightly bigger battery with 3110 milliampere which helps to have an one hour additional talk time when compared to the iPhone XR. Out of these features the night mode and the ability to take pet portrait photos are good to have but if you look at the additional camera that's the 12MP ultra wide camera it does not come with image stabilization. So if you do have shaky hands or if you are trying to take a picture while you are moving you end up getting blurry shots. The iPhone XR does not have a 2x optical zoom, but in most situations, you can overcome this by shooting closer to the object. If you are someone that takes a lot of photos at low light conditions, or if you have a pet at home, you should look at the iPhone 11. If you do not have these two requirements, you should be well served by the iPhone XR itself. In either case, if you are planning to buy one of these phones at this time, I would highly recommend you to hold until 2020 October because with the release of the iPhone 12 series, you'll be able to buy these phones at an even discounted price. This is the end of my review of the iPhone XR. If you like the video, please subscribe. More videos coming on the Pixel 4a and the iPhone 12 series. Until then, take care and stay safe.